This is Toolbox. It's a $169 plug-in accessory that's available for Windows and Mac. There isn't yet any support for Linux. And it's designed to help speed up your workflow in photo and video editing software such as Lightroom, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, and of course, DaVinci Resolve. But you can actually customize it to set up shortcuts for pretty much anything. Now Toolbox did send this to me free of charge, but as always, I'm not obliged to say anything and all opinions are entirely my own. Hmm. Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk you through the construction, the layout, the setup, and what it's actually like to use with DaVinci Resolve so you can make an informed decision for yourself. So a quick introduction, it comes with a bunch of presets for Lightroom, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, but it doesn't come with anything for DaVinci Resolve. You have to create your own preset, which is what I've done, which I'll cover in a moment. You can also import and export presets, so if you did decide to pick one up, I could simply export my preset, send it over, and it'll give you a good place to get started. Now, we do actually use Lightroom and Photoshop myself, but I haven't really tested the toolbox with those. I've just stuck to using it with DaVinci Resolve, which is what we're gonna cover in this video. So with all that out of the way, let's take a bit of a deep dive into this toolbox, shall we? Starting off with what you get in the box. Fortunately, dead quick, dead easy. You get the toolbox itself. You get a five foot braided USB type A to type C cable. You get some kind of naff feeling carry cases, an instruction manual, a warranty, and some other stuff. And that's it. So onto the device itself, and as you can see, it's actually quite small, but it is surprisingly heavy, weighing in about 400 grams. You combine that weight with these handy rubber feet, it does mean that you've got a device which won't slip around on your desk too much, which is nice. Now there's only one port on the device, which is this USB type C port on the top left. This is what you use to connect the device to your computer. The outer shell is made of like a soft touch plasticky material. Feels okay, but it does show fingerprints, grease, dust, all that sort of stuff really easily. So it might get a bit grim over time. Now there are three assignable dials. We've got this one down here, this large one in the middle, and then this one over in the top left. Now, this one in the top left is also clickable. And then we've got 11 customizable buttons dotted around the device, but they can also be combined. So you can do multiple key presses like so, giving you roughly about 40 customizable shortcuts in total. On initial inspection, it does look like they sort of just dropped buttons and dials all over the place, but actually there is some logic to it and it actually works surprisingly well. Drop your left hand onto your desk and fold it over. These keys sit nicely on the thumb. You've got access to the D-pad. All of the dial wheels come quite naturally and these two buttons up here and the shortcut one on the left. It is, however, a little bit cramped. I don't have the biggest hands in the world, but if you had much bigger hands than me, it is gonna feel a little bit tight on space. Now, as you can see, pretty much every button, with the exception of these two up here, are a different size and shape, which does mean that they're all quite easy to find and distinguish by hand which is good because it's all black on black here and there's no backlight in, so it would be pretty difficult to see in a low light environment. There's also some additional nice touches like they've added a texture to this button here, so it's a little bit easier to distinguish between these two. I would have liked them to do the same up here on these two little shortcut buttons. A little notch or a dimple on one of them just to help distinguish when you're using your thumb would have been a nice little touch, but overall it works surprisingly well. So while I struggled to remember exactly what each of the buttons did, I learned the location of the buttons really, really quickly, which did surprise me. Now by default, it definitely feels like it's designed for right-handed users. And by that, I mean you use your mouse in your right hand and you use the toolbox in your left hand. However, because everything is customizable, you could use it with your right hand if you are a lefty. It'd be a little bit of a different way of working, but you could customize it to work without too many compromises. The only thing that I think you'd struggle with the most is getting over to this button on the left-hand side. In terms of feel, all the buttons have a quite a nice click to them. They give a decent amount of feedback without having too much or too little travel. Now this scroll wheel at the top here, this is the clickable one. This again feels quite nice. It's quite well dampened, has a nice click, nice bit of feedback to it. It feels like the scroll wheel from a relatively well sorted mouse. However, these other two dials I'm not as much of a fan of. They serve their purpose just fine, however they're quite plasticky. There's also a little bit of wobble in them, especially this one in the middle, and there's just very little weight or feedback. They don't spin freely, as you can see, but they don't really feel like they're attached to much. More damping and a heavier fill would definitely be appreciated here. Overall, a bit of a mixed bag. 
it actually functions better than it looks. It looks a bit strange with the layout, but as I say, when your hand's in place, it actually feels quite natural and everything with the exception of these two spinning wheels here are actually quite nice to use. And there it is. As I say, bit of a mixed bag, but overall feels pretty good with just a handful of exceptions. So let's have a look at setup. Now setup is actually really easy. You plug it in, Windows picked it up, I then went to the Toolbox website, downloaded the console, installed that, that installed everything that I needed to, and then I was able to get up and running. It really is just a couple of minutes to do the entire process. So there's nothing complicated about that at all. And then once it's installed, you can hop into the Toolbox console, which I'm gonna talk you through right now. Once the Toolbox console is installed, you can open it up and it looks like this. So these are the default presets you get, Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Edit and Premiere Color. To create your own preset, it's dead easy. You've got preset list up here, you click on the little plus, customize preset, you give it a name and then you create, which is what I've done here for my DaVinci Resolve shortcut. Now you'll notice the Resolve logo here because you can get it to auto switch presets depending on which application you've got open. You would just open DaVinci Resolve then you click on this icon, it'll show you the list of all the programs that you've got open. You click on DaVinci Resolve and that links it. So now whenever I open DaVinci Resolve, it automatically runs this preset. So it's really quick and really handy. And then to create a preset and start assigning shortcuts, you just do so over on the right hand side here. So you can see we've got all the different buttons listed down here and they show up on this image so they're easy to identify. Alternatively, you can just hit the corresponding button on the toolbox itself and it will take you to the right area to assign a shortcut. So to assign them, you just give it a click and then there's a list of options in here. Now these are shortcuts that I've created. So you just enter the keyboard shortcut at the top here. So you've got Control, Alt, Shift and the Windows key. You just enter whatever you need to do and then you give this button a click and you can give it a name. So I've already created a whole bunch. You can see we've got things like copy and paste, mark, snap, cut, We've got zooms in, we've got nudges, razors, in and out points, all that sort of stuff. Once you've created all the shortcuts, you then just give the one that you want a click, click on OK, and it assigns it to that button. So it's really, really quite simple to do. So these are all the simple buttons. If we click on this little drop down under each of the sections, you can see you can also start to combine buttons. So again, if we use this center dial as an example, I can use it on its own, or if I hold this left button, and then the dial, I can create a different shortcut to do a different thing. And you can do that for all the different areas. So we've got the Prime 4 section here, which are our short, tall, top button and left button. And we can double press them, so we can assign different shortcuts for those, or we can start to combine them as well. So you can see here, you've got the option to create loads and loads of different shortcuts, depending on how many you want. I actually find that to be too confusing at the moment. That's too many things to remember. So I'm not using most of them. There's just a few which I'm making use of currently. Now, by the looks of things, there's no limit on how many presets you can create. So you can create a preset for pretty much all of the different software or apps that you use. You can go to the Toolbox website where people have uploaded their own presets. So you can download those and start having a play. People have done them for all sorts. Obviously photo video editing, but people have created them for Chrome, web browsers, all that sort of stuff. So you really can have a play and just create shortcuts for anything, really. Anything that you use keyboard shortcuts, you could just assign to the toolbox. So it's a really quite a handy little thing. Now that also includes games. So if you play games where you use lots of keyboard shortcuts, maybe you're playing World of Warcraft or League of Legends, that sort of thing, you could assign macros or keyboard shortcuts to this thing and you make a nice little device to sit by your keyboard and mouse. You can just hit it and off you go. So food for thought, you can create loads of different presets, use it with loads of different stuff, which is kind of cool. But how does it actually work in DaVinci Resolve? Let's open DaVinci Resolve and take a look. So here we are within DaVinci Resolve and we're currently on the edit tab. Now, because the toolbox is simply emulating keyboard shortcuts, you can actually use it within any page within DaVinci Resolve. You could even go as far as setting up separate presets for each of the different pages if you wanted to. I haven't done that, I'm just sticking with the edit page for now. So here we are on the edit page. I'm just gonna give you an idea of how I've got mine set up. So I use the toolbox in my left hand and then I keep my mouse in my right hand. So I'll use my mouse to do big movements like just scrolling through the timeline like so. And then if I want to make any finer movements, I'll put my playhead where it is and then I'll use this center dial. So if I roll that right, we can just move the playhead to the right and then move it left and I can move it to the left. That will do frame by frame if I move it slowly and then I can move it a little bit quicker as well. Once I've got it in a position where I want to make a cut, I use this 
little button here with my thumb, and that'll just make a quick cut. And then if I want to delete, I use this short button to the right just to do a ripple delete on the timeline. This little button on the left will just do an undo. So if I deleted that accidentally, we could just hit that to undo. Let's undo that cut as well. Now if I hold that side button and then use my center dial, I can just jump between all the different cuts or markers that I've got on my timeline. So again, that's a nice quick way of making big jumps around my timeline. If I put my playhead in the middle of this clip here like so, if I hold this left button and then use this tall and short again, if I hit this tall one, what it'll do is make a cut where the playhead is and then ripple delete the left side, the rear side of the playhead, like so, if I just undo that. If I hold the side button and hit the short button here, it'll do the same thing, but deleting this right hand side. Now that's actually the main use for me of the toolbox at the moment. It's just a real nice way of jumping around the timeline, making cuts and ripple deletes really, really quickly. So let's move on now to this dial up in the top left hand corner. If I give that a click, that will just play and pause. If I just give that one notch upwards, it'll play in real time. And then the more that I hit that upwards, the faster it'll start playing through the timeline. If I click it in, we can stop. And if I roll it down, it's just does the same thing, but plays backwards through the timeline. This button at the top here, I've just got to play and pause at the moment because I couldn't think of a better use for it. Under this center dial, we've got this little button here. That just does a control S, so a save. So I can just save my project at any time. Let me just move my playhead onto this clip and then we'll use this lower left wheel. If I just rotate that, I can just nudge clips left and right on my timeline like so. Now this is really useful because as you can see, I've still got snapping turned on. So if I was to use my mouse, I could snap that left and right. But if I wanted to make any fine little adjustments, let's say to this section here, I can click it so it's highlighted in green, use this little dial just to make sure that that cut is in exactly the right place. So that makes a nice little use for it. We'll come back to the D-pad in a moment. We're gonna to skip to the C1, C2 shortcut buttons up here and they simply add an in and an out. And then if I hold this tool button and use the same again, I can clear the in and then clear the out. Let me just click on a new clip. We'll just do a quick in and out. And then I can use the left and right buttons on the D-pad. The left will do a place on top while the right will do an insert. So if I just do left, it'll place that clip on top of the video track one. So we've got it up here so I can do a nice quick cutaway. And if I just do right on the D-pad, it'll just insert it onto the video one track where the playhead is, like so. So again, adding new media, I can do my ins and out, my insert and my place on top. The up and down on the D-pad simply does a copy and a paste. So I can just copy and paste footage around my timeline really quickly. Now if I was to hold my side button, I can use the up, down, left, right buttons again, but this time they do something different. So if I hold the side button and hit down on the D-pad, That'll take me straight into the color page. And if I do the same thing again, left, it'll take me back to the edit page. Up will take me into fusion and right will take me to the deliver tab. So again, nice quick way of just skipping around the different pages within DaVinci Resolve. And last but not least, if I hold this little short button and use the C1 and C2, so I'm gonna hold that down and hit C1. That will open up my project settings. And if I hold that down and hit C2, that'll bring up my import media routine. And that's all the shortcuts I've got set up at the moment. And there you go. As you can see, it does work surprisingly well with DaVinci Resolve. And if I'm totally honest, I've actually enjoyed my time with Toolbox way more than I thought I would. I've really quite enjoyed using it. It feels relatively well put together and the layout, which looks odd, is actually quite nice to use. Installation was easy, setup was relatively simple, the customization continues to be pretty simple, you can make tweaks to it nice and easily. The software is regularly updated by Torbox, which is always nice to see, and in my experience it's been totally reliable. It just sits in the system tray, opens up with Windows, and then does its thing as soon as I jump into DaVinci Resolve. So do you need it? In my opinion, no, absolutely not. You can be really quite efficient with a keyboard and mouse. However, once you get over the learning curve, you get over that initial frustration of switching to something new, it can start to help, it can feel really nice to use, and in my opinion, you can start to become faster. It can improve your workflow because everything is a little bit quicker, it's easier to find, and it's way easier to remember a couple of buttons than it is a whole bunch of complicated keyboard shortcuts. 
Should you buy one? Well, that's entirely up to you as to whether you think it will fit within your workflow. Also, I don't think you should buy one now. You should wait until the Blackmagic Speed Editor has been released so you can have more of a comparison between the two. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or feedback, please put them down below. And if you're new here, you enjoyed this video, you want to see some more DaVinci Resolve tech reviews and tutorials, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. Thanks ever so much for watching. Take it easy. I'll see you next time. See ya.